Chapter 6. Making Fruit Grenades Matt and I get my markers and draw grids on the avocados piled on the kitchen counter. When we finish, we take them outside and stack them like cannonballs. Then we borrow three bags of potting soil from the garage, empty them into the middle of the driveway, and build two large mounds. We take our places behind the opposite hills. If we were still in school, we'd be in social studies right now. He pelts me with one of the avocados, which lands in green chunks on my sneaker. I hurl an avocado back, but miss. Even worse than social studies, we'd be in assembly watching Mr. Dimitri sing stupid folk songs. I'm not sure if it's our explosion noises that bring my mother out of the house, but when I look up, she's standing on the porch watching us bomb each other. They are hand grenades, I inform her. I got it. She looks at me with that face that tells me I've messed up once again. I was going to use those avocados for dinner. I point to the green mush all over the driveway and our clothes. They're still edible. Why don't you bring out a bag of chips? She closes the door without answering, and I know we won't be seeing chips anytime soon. Besides, Bodhi has already eaten the biggest chunks of avocado off the driveway. The next person to appear on the porch is my father. One of the good things about having a father who works from home is that he's always around. Unfortunately, that's one of the bad things, too. He places a box of large garbage bags on the stairs. I assume you two are planning on putting all that potting soil back, right? Right. Matt and I both pretend to agree. Dad takes a $10 bill out of his wallet and places it under the box. Then you can walk to the store and replace those avocados. My father keeps talking, but Matt and I are only focused on the crisp $10 bill calling our names. I'm thinking seven, maybe eight king-sized candy bars. I bet Matt is thinking the same thing. But when my father, father finally goes inside, Matt and I die for the money. He gets it before I do. Giant bag of popcorn, a tub of ice cream, or a box of cupcakes with sprinkles. He snaps the bill at me like it's a towel in gym class. Matt and I skateboard to the grocery store, and I ask the man in the produce department if there are any avocados on sale. He brings out several from the back room that are much cheaper than the ones in the bins. Matt and I have enough money left over to get a quart of chocolate fudge ice cream. We take utensils and napkins from the salad bar, then sit on the skateboards out back to eat. Guess where my mom decided we're going on vacation this summer? Matt asks. I shrug and dig at the vein of the fudge buried along the side of the carton. Martha's Vineyard. Isn't that where the girl in that newspaper article drowned? I suddenly feel envious of Matt's vacation plans. Not because his family is going away and we're not, but because he is one step closer to having a real adventure than I am. Why don't you ask your mom if you can take me? I took you to San Francisco last year, remember? Since I'm an only child, my parents often let me take my friends on vacation. Sometimes I take Matt, and sometimes I just take Bodie. Matt tries to get at the fudge by fencing his spoon with mine. I finally move my spoon out of the way to make room for his. I'll ask my mom if you can come, but it's 3,000 miles to the vineyard. I'm not sure what she's going to say. I whisper a prayer from inside my head straight to Matt's mom. Say yes, I'll be good. Say yes, I'll be good. When we finally get home, my mother tests the avocados in her hands and as tells me they're overripe and will be brown inside. She sweeps them off the counter into the trash, then wipes off my chocolate mustache with the dish towel. She uses a little too much force, but I don't complain. We have takeout Chinese food for dinner, and I don't complain about that either. I take a thumbtack and fasten the slip from my fortune cookie onto the bulletin board in my room. A story will unfold before you. I bury myself underneath the covers and hope it will be true. If only I could get the guys at the fortune cookie factory to do my summer book report, too. I focus on my new plan, to talk Matt's mom into letting me accompany them on vacation.